Hello and welcome to today's experiment, which is going to be all about can I make cheese out of powders from the cupboard? cheeses over the last year or so using Miyoko Shinner's recipes. I'll post a little link to her website if I can find one for you. And I thought this time I'm going to try and make one from scratch, sort of. It has been inspired by Connie's Rawson Kitchen, fantastic YouTube channel, especially if you like long form, soothing voice and just watching hands tinkering away in the kitchen. I watched one of Connie's recipes a while back where she made a fontanella cheese out of a boiled potato and then when I went to the Asian supermarket I found a bag of mashed potato powder so you just add hot water to it and you've got mashed potatoes so I thought well I'll buy it stick it in the cupboard and come back to it at some point and that point is today apparently I'm going to do two possibly three cheeses using a similar recipe but with some different ingredients I'm going to smoke one of them as well when I'm devising recipes, I tend to kind of work in cups because it just makes things easier to estimate rather than grams. But I'm going to try and weigh things for you as well. So I'm doing two cups of mashed potato powder. So that's 400 grams. I'm adding three tablespoons of potato starch. Now, because this is kind of inspired by Connie's recipe, I'm not 100% sure why she uses the powder that she uses. But from what I've seen, potato starch, is used in when you're making jelly sweets as a and I've used it for glaze. It has a really nice clarity to it and a jelly-like structure. So I think it's going to help with the set. You know, kind of get give something nice to bite on. A tablespoon of salt. Sounds like a lot of salt, but it's going to be a lot of powders and liquid, so it should balance out enough. I'm doing half a teaspoon of garlic powder and a teaspoon of onion powder, a tablespoon and a half of carrageenan kappa, and this gives a slightly firmer set than agar does. I bought some vegan lactic acid a while back with the intent of cheese making, but never got around to doing it. So this is a bit theoretical here. So I'm thinking I'll do, well, I'll do half a teaspoon. <laughs> uh, but it's got that really nice tangy bite to it. That you get with like a really strong cheddar. Half a cup of tapioca starch, which is about 65 grams. Again, that gives a nice stretch. Sieve these together. I'm adding a tablespoon of mushroom powder, and that's just dried shiitake mushrooms that I grated really finely to give a nice depth and kind of boost in the flavor. Doing half a cup of nooch, nutritional yeast, which is 20 grams, and that's got that cheesy kind of vibe to it. I'm going to give the powders a really good stir through at this point, mix it all together. I'm going to make a little well in the middle and I'll pour my liquids into that. I've got a third of a cup of refined coconut oil that's melted. That's 70 mils. I've just figured out that these cup measures are totally off because <laughs> of course they are. But anyway, as long as you keep the ratio the same, it shouldn't really matter what size it is. So I'm adding a cup of soy milk, which is about 200 mils, rather than the 250 that is stated in there. I'm adding about three tablespoons of white miso. It's just got a milder flavor than brown miso. I'll work the liquid in at this point. Do another cup, so another 200 mils of soy milk another cup. I'm adding a little bit of golden syrup for a bit of sweetness. I might blend this now that it's a bit more liquid. I just don't think I'm going to get it smooth enough by hand. So I'm going to blend it. I'm a bit nervous about this. Oh dear. Oh, bloody hell. Yeah, so that's what I was scared of happening. I'm adding another cup of milk into the blender now that I've scraped most of it out. I can smell burned plastic, which I think is the motor. So this might not work at all, but we'll try. As the powders heat up, the tapioca 
potato and the carrageenan, they're going to swell, so it needs water to swell into. I've got the pan on a gentle heat. I'm just going to try and combine some of this extra liquid in with the mix. I mean, the blender got it, did get it quite smooth, so that should be okay. Add another <laughs> cup of milk. Don't know why I thought it would be less than this. <laughs> mm. I'm going to add another third of a cup of coconut oil. That's for mouthfeel more than anything else, really. I'm debating whether to put more tapioca and carrageenan in there. Yeah, I just don't know if there's going to be enough in there to set it. Put a bit on there, see what happens. I'm just going to check that bit that I put in the fridge. I'm going to do another half cup of nooch to boost that cheesy flavour. It's actually not bad. I think what I'm going to do is take some out and do a batch of this mixture as it is. And then add a bit more liquid and setting agents and do another batch or two out of that. Because it's not the moisture content that's worrying me per se, because I'm going to be drying it, aging it anyway. You can see how brittle it is. I don't know if brittle is the right word, but it's just crumbling. Pack that in really tight. So to this remaining wall, I'm going to do another half cup of tapioca, do another three of potato starch, another one and a half of carrageenan, do a cup of milk, mix this in a kind of a slurry just so then it doesn't, hopefully, it doesn't lump as badly when I add it to the hot mix. So the mix is all in kind of little bits, pour it on. And work this through, keep stirring it. And it definitely looks like it's holding better than the other batch was. Okay, so I'm gonna blob some in here. So there's a cheese I used to love in Holland. I can't remember the name of it. I'll put a subtitle. And it has fenugreek in it. This smells smells a bit like maple syrup. Mm. <laughs> so I'm gonna put a load of that in. And obviously as the cheese ages those will soften up and release their flavour. Yeah, it's definitely holding up quite well on the shape. And then the last one, I'm going to do the same kind of thing, but with caraway seeds. And the tub really is acting as a mould, so I'm going to get that kind of shape. And I can always trim it down if I want to. I'm going to leave these to cool down. Then I'll put the lids on and put them in the fridge overnight just so they can finish setting up as hard as they can. And then starts the process of aging it and drying it. But I'll talk you through that tomorrow. It's the following day. So the cheeses have had about 24 hours. What I did before going to bed was to line the tubs with a bit of paper towel to help them dry out. So we'll see where we're at. This has been on my mind all evening. <laughs> Just like, is this worth continuing with? I just think there might be too much potato in there um, for it to work properly. This is the first batch. I mean, it tastes cheesy, so that's good. I'm gonna try and trim some of this back on the top. It's actually not too bad. So it's quite firm. I'll wrap it in more paper towel and then wrap it in some brown paper and that will help it dry out more in the fridge. I'm going to salt the outside, again that helps pull extra moisture out and then we'll wrap it up in the paper. This is just the brown paper that comes when you have packages shipped from a certain company. It is holding up quite well and I'm not being particularly delicate or anything as I handle it. So perhaps my concern was unfounded. The remaining three are the batch where I put more of the tapioca, potato and carrageenan in. So it might, well I'm hoping it will have a different texture. Be slightly denser. This one's more potatoey and more flaky. This can obviously be eaten at this point, but it's gonna be better after it's aged for a couple of weeks. So what that does to the texture. This is the one with the fenugreek seeds. That's a big old bit of cheese, isn't it? I'm very confused as to why this one's more 
powdery, but the fenugreek flavor is really good. And then we've got the caraway. I'll let those dry out in the fridge for a couple of weeks, two, three weeks, changing the paper towels every couple of days just to help pull moisture out of there. And I'll hopefully be left with a nice, dense, chewy, tasty cheese. We'll see. We're just shy of three weeks since I made the potato powder cheese, as I think I'm gonna call it. Such a snappy title, I know. I've changed the kitchen towel a couple of times just to help keep it drying out and salted it every time I nibbled a bit. And I can see there are some little white spots of mold, but that's okay because I'm gonna slice those off. So I'm gonna have a little try on all of it. A couple of them, the plain ones, I'm going to put back in the fridge and just keep on aging it down, see if I can turn into kind of a Parmesan style cheese. So firstly, I'm just gonna cut off these moldy bits. Right, so I'm going to try this one, which is the one with the fenugreek seeds in it. The texture's very crumbly. A bit like um, Wensleydale, maybe? Mmm, tastes pretty good, though. It does have a graininess, and I think that's from the potato powder. And I've been kind of thinking through ideas of what else I can try. And I think if I do it again, I might blend the powder up just to make it even finer. I also want to try doing one made with oats, cashews, and maybe a bit of potato as well. And I might do one with like a baked potato, scoop the flesh out. But I think that would be quite nice in a sandwich. Mm. Decided I'm gonna chuck a bit in the air fryer and see what happens when you heat it up. Um, yeah, I don't think it's gonna melt because I don't think there's enough oil in there, but I'm interested to see what happens to the texture. It has got a good texture, a little bit, squidgy and it's got a nice denseness to it that it is very cheese like i'm going to show you this real quick as well so i made a batch of miyoko shinner's emmental the air dried one and just left it in the fridge for about mm, six seven months maybe more no about six six seven months and then grated it super fine mixed it with a bit of salt and nutritional yeast and it's come out like a really nice parmesan. So I've been eating massive bowls of pasta with this all over the top of it. And it dried out perfectly. And it has a good texture, whereas I found some of the other cheeses, because it uses so much cashew, they go a bit waxy and I just don't find it pleasant. Whereas this, perfect. Here's the air fryer experiment. So yeah didn't melt, <laughs> which as I suspected it wouldn't. It's kind of toasted a bit. Mmm, really nice toasty kind of flavour with a bit of cheese vibe going through it. That would make a really nice topping for something. Maybe like a shepherd's pie. Onto the caraway. Texture is very similar, unsurprisingly. And the caraway flavour is really good. This is batch number two. That's the, so it's the second lot with more powders in it and no flavourings. I think the addition of the spices kind of mutes the potato powder flavour because it does have a distinct taste. Not unpleasant or anything, but it's there. It does have a definite Mm, like a mild cheddar. Mm. That's very nice. I'm gonna put one of batch one and one of batch two back in the fridge and see how far I can take them down. And I'm gonna put some tapioca flour on. I've just decided to see if that helps inhibit the mold growth because I've used it successfully with the other cheeses. Works quite well, but it does give a kind of texture on the top that you have to then scrape off. This was the first one that I did before adding in a load more stuff. <laughs> so it'll be interesting to see if there's a huge difference in texture. Hmm. There's more mold, a lot more mold. That's got a much stronger flavor. Like a sharp cheddar. It feels a bit firmer as well, which is surprising. I've got the two plain batches, one and two with tapioca and the caraway and fenugreek with tapioca as well. So I'm gonna put them back downstairs, see how we get on in the next few weeks. 
and then I'm going to smoke mm, the other two. Yum! So I've got the two batches here. I bought a little cold smoker off Amazon. No idea how this is going to work. I've never used one before. I've never seen one before. So I'm very much <laughs> trying it and seeing what happens. I've made a little spiral out of wire. I'm going to bend the tubing with just so I don't force any kinks into it and just to get it lying a little bit flatter. And then I took one of my Tupperwares, bored a hole through it for the nozzle. And I was feeling rather crafty the other day. So I made a little rack using coffee stirrers and a scart lead that I took apart and just wrapped the wire around. Really, it would have been fine doing it with string because I ran out of wire in the end. So string works better, really. And then what I've got here are some little elastic bands. These are for hair braids, but you can use any kind at all. And what I'm gonna do, what, what my plan is to tie it around the nozzle inside and just hopefully create a kind of airtight seal. So we'll see if I can get my fingers in there. You can see the band around the nozzle there. There is a slight crack in the top. It's, the plastic's more brittle than I anticipated, so when I stuck the knife in, it just kind of shattered a little bit. But hopefully it'll be okay. Put the rack in, put my cheeses in. I've cut the blocks in half because I'm thinking I'm gonna do, I just don't know about timing, so I'm thinking I might do them for from now until I go to bed. It's six o'clock, so maybe if I go to stay up till about two, so about eight hours and then maybe put the second block in for another few hours tomorrow. I just don't want to leave it unattended completely overnight because I don't know how it works. I just need to be able to keep coming in and out. And I don't want to set an alarm clock and get up at stupid o'clock in the morning. And then attach the hose to it. I bought three types of chips. tins from my inhalers and apparently there's a coating on the inside <laughs> well I'm glad I found out this way rather than putting a pate in it which is what I planned on doing bought a couple of different types of chips and I used down the cove that's the company I found on eBay I've got mesquite and apple wood and then the thing itself came with some hickory I'm going to use hickory for this um, because I've had apple wood cheese. That's the kind of vegan cheese that I've been buying. So I thought, try hickory myself. I called the people to get a bit of advice on whether I should soak the chips or not and all this kind of stuff. And they, he, the guy advised drying the, doing it dry and to dry the chips out even more, pop them in the oven at 200 degrees for about 30 minutes, which is what I've done. So, the moment of truth, I guess. But I'm gonna put the chips in here on that gauze and then to clean it, undo that. And then there's a little fan in that part, which I'm assuming then funnels the smoke down into there. So I'm gonna fill the chamber and I'm gonna light it. My contraption isn't working properly. <laughs> okay, no, there's, there's a fair bit actually coming in. Ooh! Turn that on. Does need some refinement, but I do a little close up the box. There's no way I can do this for hours because those chips are already like half used. So it would just mean sitting here topping it up constantly. <laughs> mm. Smells amazing though. I'm gonna turn it off. I'm thinking. It might be an idea to put some electrical tape around that nozzle just to keep the smoke in there a bit better. It is a pretty cool little gadget, I'll give it that, but yeah, it's just not going to be suitable for this purpose. I think I am going to have to either build or buy more of a long period of time smoking thing. I think this might be more for restaurants in terms of like smoked cocktails or uh, I've heard about a smoked salmon dish where you have a glass cloche and when you lift it, it releases a load of smoke and this will be perfect for that. <laughs> but as a smoking device for cheese, not so much. 
but you know, it's good to try these things and amass loads of random gadgets. All right, so I'm gonna let this do its thing for as long as I can be bothered filling it up. <laughs> and um, yeah, and then we'll reassess things in a bit. It's the 17th of April, so a couple of months after I smoked the two cheeses. I put them all in the fridge to air dry them, and admittedly I kept forgetting to change the paper. I was thinking, oh, I should do that on camera, and then I didn't have the time because everything takes twice as long, and a camera's involved. Hmm. So, and then I just forget. <laughs> and then when I opened a packet, it was just, there was just blue mold everywhere. Now I don't like blue cheese anyway, so I just chucked that in the bin. And I don't know enough about the cheese making process to know whether it's bad mold or good mold. But the two that I smoked are fine. So let's have a little look. That's batch number one. So that was the first one before I added the extra powders in. And then I put the tapioca on top. That's batch number two, so that has the extra stuff in it. Now that is the the coating that I was talking about and it's just not very nice to eat so I'm going to try and brush that off a little bit. I've got a little spud brush so it's very stiff bristles so I'm going to try and brush it off a little bit and I've just seen there was a crack when I've opened it, the mould. So on the bit with the mould I've just chopped it well beyond the mould so that should be okay. Yeah and it doesn't smell mouldy in any way and in terms of texture it's um yeah, it's very firm. So it's kind of like a parmesan almost. And I think if I kept on aging that down for another four or five months, because the outside is very hard and you can see it more so on here. If I can get this in the light, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to, but on the corners here, as I look down on it and especially through the light, there is a translucency to it which I've noticed uh, the other Parmesan, it had that kind of quality to it. So I'll have a go on batch number one. Mm. Mm. I'm actually shocked at how smoky that is. To say it only had maybe 20 minutes, I did two of those chambers of the smoker. But it's packed full of the hickory smoke flavor. Mmm, that's exciting. Try a bit of number two. Mmm, the smoke flavour is kind of dominating everything, but if you gave that to somebody and said, what is that? They'd say cheese, because it does have a kind of cheesy funk. Not pongy nasty cheese you know that's really stinking bishopy um, but it's got that umami tangy mmm that's quite nice the flavors aren't radically different but I prefer the flavor of the first one in terms of sort of cost effectiveness batch number one is going to be cheaper because the mashed potato is the cheapest part of that and there's more of that than the, the starches and that kind of thing. But I'm, I'm still blown away at the level of smoke flavour that's in there. I just thought there's no way it's going to have like a flavour throughout it. But it's delicious. Let's see how it slices on here. So it does have quite a Parmesan appearance. It's got that brittleness, but it's staying together. This is num number two. And again, holding up really well. I think that in a sandwich, maybe with some of the deli meats I made, would just be really delicious. And it's so much cheaper than the store-bought one. And it is nicer, actually, than the store-bought. Those are, they've got a kind of plastic sort of vibe to them. <laughs> and there is always a very distinctive taste. And I think that is the coconut. This doesn't have any of that. It just has the savouriness rather than, the vegan cheese store-bought ones can be a bit sweet. This is just umami, salty. Mmm, just packed full of flavour. 
I'm really happy about that because I've had a bit of a day <laughs> and that's kind of cheered me up a bit. I was initially a bit disappointed with the purchase of the smoker because yeah I'd thought oh it's a waste of money that kind of thing I was feeling a bit bad um, but then I used it for the smoked mushroom whiskey and walnut pate I'll stick the link there for you and now I've just tasted this wow it must be the smoking that's made it not mold or you know guarded it against the molding but I don't I you know I don't really know the process and I don't know bacteria enough to understand why that would be the case so as I carry on my explorations I'll learn a bit more about that if like me you've been a bit stunned at the possibilities of cupboard powders and cheese hit subscribe and tap the bell icon let's see what else I can create